What up, y'all? It's your boy, Bill. I got one for y'all today. As you can see, the title say, It Can Happen Anywhere. Um, Before we get into that, make money, not excuses. Y'all know how we do. This the shirt. I'm getting ready to put it back up on the site. I took it down because I thought this was kind of basic. I kind of didn't like the way it looked. And I wanted to wait till I got it first just to see because I didn't want y'all to buy it and it'd be a bunch of BS. But I'm satisfied with the texture. You know, it's simple. It's basic. Make money, make excuses. Make money, not excuses. And I, I'm satisfied with it. I like it. So I'm going to post it back up soon. So let's jump right back into the video. All right. It can happen anywhere. I'm going to tell y'all the story about this guy named Unk. This old school guy. He was real cool. He was known around the prison. Um, he, he was pretty much known for fighting. He will use the ratchet every now and then if he really had to, but he was more so of a fighter, but the fighting really isn't even what he was known for. He was just known because he had been there at that specific prison for so long. You see what I'm saying? He had been there. I think at this one prison for like 18 years, he had been locked up. I think pushing 30 years. Unk was 62 years old. He was in decent shape. He used to go out there, play basketball, had gray waves, spinning. And um, so one day he get to fighting with a dude that was affiliated. This dude had a little pool. He had a little say-so at the prison. Now, I didn't witness the fight with my own two eyes, but I was in the dorm. I was probably about five or six rooms down from it. Um... But I I think Unk pretty much got the best of him. Dude was a young dude, probably like 28, 27, 28. The dude he got to fighting with. But when Unk, the reason I say I think Unk got the best of him because when Unk came out the room, <clears throat> he came out making noise. He was like, yeah, yeah, y'all young can't with me. He was like, you have my age and you can't with me. I'm 62 years old and you can't with me. You know, stuff like that. So I looked down there, dude didn't come out the room. Now, when they went down there to fight, it was all kind of people ran down there trying to watch it. You know what I'm saying? Now, back in my immature days, I probably would have done that. But at that point, I had already knew better. Don't do that because that's how you get caught up in stuff that ain't even got nothing to do with you. So later on that night, they put Unk on the door. Now, I told y'all what that means. But for the people who don't know what it means to get put on the door, that basically means you finna take all your property and leave out this dorm or else. You know what I'm saying? So I guess I didn't see them pushing up on Uncle or whatever, but I, when I was coming out of my room, I seen him walking across the floor. He had all of his property, big old bundles and stuff inside of his blanket, and he had it over his shoulder. Excuse me. And he was walking to the door. He said whatever he said to the officer. And she let him straight out. So, um, yeah, they put him on the door. Now, at that particular prison, when you go to the hole, you got to do uh, at least 30 days in the hole. It don't matter if you get put on the door. It don't matter what happened. You got to do at least 30 days in the hole. So, Unk went to the hole. Probably about two or three days later, I end up going to the hole. So, I went to the hole about something didn't even have nothing to do with me. It was some people got to fighting. The prison got a bunch of raggedy, toe-up cameras. And they came in and locked us down because some people was fighting. And then when they did their investigation, they came and took me and, like, two other people that really was fighting to the hole, talking about they seen me on camera fighting. You know, I just, I was just like, all right, bro, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? They asking me why y'all was fighting. I'm like, I wasn't fighting nobody. We seen you on the camera. No, you did not. So they like, all right, you going to tell us why y'all fighting what? So I'm just like, whatever, bro. Let's just go to the hole. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't going to say, no, that wasn't me. That was, that, it, just, it ain't even that serious. You know what I'm saying? So I could do 30 days. So after 30, I think I got out after 31 days, they sent me to another dorm. Now, the dorm that I went to, I know some people in here, but I'm just not cool, cool with nobody in here. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm just in there minding my business, walking laps. That's one thing I used to always do. It seemed like it helped me think. 
and it kind of make time go by quicker. I just used to walk laps all the time around the dorm. So, uh, I see Unk come out one of the rooms. So I'm like, Unk? So he like, see, Ben? So I'm like, oh, man, what's up, man? When you got over here? So Unk was like, he been in the dorm for like two days already. So, um, <clears throat> me and Unk go, to, you know, just talking, chopping it up, like on a daily thing, like cause we just was in another dorm with each other. So, like I say, I'm cool with some people in this dorm, but, you know, I'm just talking to Unk. It's like we more familiar. So Unk started talking to me about the law, about the law library. He was telling me how he be going up there, how he said for like the past 10 years he been studying the prison law and, you know, just the, the Georgia law, not even just the prison. And how he, uh, you know, he pretty much like got a lot of stuff accomplished by the law. And he, he had life without the possibility of parole at first. That means you're not never getting out, don't even think about it. But he said since he been going to the law library and he done got himself together, he filed, you know, so many uh, like motions to the court. And he said his case had so many loopholes in it. He got the without possibility part dropped off. So at that moment, he only had life, which is a minimum of 30 years before you become eligible in the state of Georgia. So. He had already been locked up like 30 some years. So he was like, man, his next motion I file, I'm going to go home, bro. They're going to give me time serving, let me go home. So I'm like, that was up. He said he just got to study. So he was trying to talk to me about my case. So I'm like, bro, I done pretty much already played guilty. It ain't no sense of me trying. I don't got a life sentence. But he like, bro, that don't matter. He like, it's still a lot of stuff you can do. You know what I'm saying? So I end up going to the law library with him one day. Now, the library is like this. When you walk outside your dorm, you want to walk. It's concrete. And then it's a fence that separates you from the yard. That's like when they call us and let us go outside and run around or whatever. That's called the yard. So it's a gate that separates that. So you walk up the walk, up the concrete. And once you get up there by the administration buildings, like at the top of the building, you will see names, medical, administration, counseling, library on the top of the building so you go into the library one and uh you know it's just like a regular library they got it's a desk right here as soon as you walk in but instead of it being a librarian behind the desk it's an officer and against the wall they got a bunch of computers for people who want to look up case load i mean uh legal cases you can't get on the internet it's like they got their own internet set up where you can only search what they letting you search. But if you try to like type in Facebook, it's not gonna, it's just not gonna do nothing. It's not gonna go to it. In the middle of the library, you got like three big tables with chairs all around it, and then behind that, well, on the side of that is like a little podium set up where you could search certain stuff, and behind that is a whole bunch of tall shelves with books everywhere. So, um, okay, so me and Unc, we going to the, the law library. Now, they let you go to the library like, like once a week for the regular library. If you just want to go check out a book, you could go once a week. But for the law library, you can go twice a week. So, they call it out during the blocks. First block, second block, third block. First block is 7 a.m. Second block is 11 a.m. Third block is 1 p.m. The block is basically like, if I say I'm going to the library, and you know, I got me a little library pass, I just had to sign up for it. It's a paper they hang on the wall. You just sign your name on it what day, and then they have you set up for it. So on the day that you set up for it, the officer will come in the dorm at 7 a.m. and be like, first block. And then if you know your name on the list, you just go or second block, third block, whatever it is they call it. So we started going like twice a week and he really was teaching me a lot of stuff about the law, but he wasn't directly just teaching me like talking everything because he working on his own. But he like pointed me in the right direction and was like, look, if you're looking for armed robbery in the state of Georgia, this is the case law you look under. Or these is the books you need. Or you need to go to the SOP and look up this stuff. 
Now, the SOP is something called the Standard Operating Procedure. It's a book like this thick. It's just strictly about how they, uh, how the how the prison is supposed to treat inmates and how they're supposed to operate legally. Now, you reference to the SOP a lot when it's anything that they're doing that they're not supposed to be doing. Then you could go look up the laws and then write a grievance on them about it or whatever the case. Or right next to the SOP was like every county in Georgia, if you need to clerk a court name for your case, you could go to that. So, um, yeah, so I was doing a lot of studying about armed robbery and I was seeing a lot of things I did wrong in my own case. Like, damn, I played guilty, man. I could have did this or I could have did that, you know. So everything seemed cool or whatever. Now, one morning, I was getting ready. I'm getting ready to go out to the law library, and I just got a feeling that came over me, right? Now, I told y'all before, I'm not no, you know, I don't, I'm not trying to proclaim to be some type of psychic or something like that. But, man, when there be some funny business going on, I promise you, bro, at least back then, when I was in there, I don't know if maybe could my Alert sensors was already up, but whenever it be some funny business going on or somebody getting hurt or something, I promise you, I could feel it. I could almost smell it in the air. You know what I'm saying? So as I'm getting dressed, because we got to put on boots, state pants, tuck your shirt in, all that. And you got to have your ID card clipped to your shirt. So as I'm getting dressed, I'm telling you, man, I feel something come over me. Now, I usually take that ratchet out there with me every day anyway, but... It was like I had a metal one and a brass one. The metal one is going to do way more damage because that's more serious. But the brass one, that's going to do damage too, but not as much as the metal one. But the brass one is for whenever they have metal detectors set up outside and they make you walk through it. That don't never go off on the metal detector. So I just feel that feeling like something going on. Something ain't right. You know what I'm saying? So I grabbed the brass one. So we hit the walk. They called uh first block. So me and Unc go out there. It's probably like five people total that went out there that day. So me and Unc go out there. So, you know, I'm paranoid. I'm looking all around. I'm trying to see what's going on. I don't, you know, I don't see nothing strange. Now, we was in D building. So to get to the library, we got to pass the other half of D building. We got to pass E building. And we got to pass F building. It's a few people sprinkled out along the walk, but it's not like just deep. So I don't know why I'm feeling this way. So as we pass E building, everything perfectly fine. We get up to F building. We pass in the first part. I'm like, everything's straight. The second part, dude went to beating on the window. So we looked over. I jumped real quick, grabbed the ratchet because I'm like, I wasn't even thinking he's on the other side of the dorm. It's just my nerves. You know what I'm saying? Just hearing the beating all of a sudden like that. So I jumped real quick and looked over. There was some dudes in there. It was like three of them at the window. And one of them linked down to the window that got all the holes in there. And he started screaming out to Unk, telling Unk, F this, F that. You need to go to the hole. You need to check in to the hole. So Unk go to arguing back with him. Like, I ain't going to no hole. What you mean go to the hole? But you half my age. You ain't putting me in no hole. Woo -woo -woo. Now, Unc did go to the hole the first time by some people half his age. You know what I'm saying? I guess he was just fed up with it. I don't know. But they pulled out the ratchets, had them all up at the window, telling him go to the hole or they're going to bust him. So, you know, we eventually walk off. So, Unc talking about what he going to do when he catch one of them. So, I ain't asked him nothing about it. I ain't say nothing. So, when we made it into the library... And we went and sat down at our little table. We was, you know, we went and got our little paperwork that we needed to study what we were studying. And I asked Unc, like, what was that about? What he had going on? And he was like, um, man, dude that I beat up over a month ago that transferred at a total different prison. I guess he's still feeling some type of way. Because all these dudes look up to him and he got beat up. So he just want to prove a point like, nah, don't nobody beat up the big homie, I guess, type situation. So Unc was like, I ain't studying him, though. I don't care what he talking about. So um, 
you know, while we was in there, I still was feeling that type of way. You know, ain't nobody in here, but it's a few other people in here studying the law, reading books, whatever they doing, sitting at the table. You got the officer sitting over there in the corner, ain't paying no attention. She on the computer. Now, the officer computer can access the real Internet. So I think she was on Facebook doing something. And then you got the orderly over here standing behind the podium. What the orderly does, any questions you got about the, uh, any questions you got about anything in the library, he like acts as the librarian and he keeps the SOP behind the podium. And when you want to use it, you got to give him your ID card. So if anything happened to it, they know who got it. The orderly for the library, like a little skinny, nerdy dude. He's living in the best building on compound. You know what I'm saying? Dude got big old glasses. Kind of look like a sex offender, to be honest. So, uh, we didn't go that next time. So, that week after that, we went out to the law library again. That morning, I felt like I knew. I had that same feeling, but I felt like I know for a fact it's either going to get crazy today or it's in the process of getting crazy because when we walked past DEF building, the same dudes that were talking crazy to them, they were standing right there in the window, but they didn't say nothing. They just standing there. So I'm like, I already know before the storm, it's quiet before the storm, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, so I asked Uncle, I'm like, bro, you, you know what I'm saying? You peeping everything, right? So he's like, man, I'm not studying them. I'm not studying them. So I'm thinking in my head, these dudes, they got a call out for the next block. They going to be coming to the law library. So I'm just like, man, dang, I hope they don't, you know what I'm saying? I hope they don't try to do it to unk, you know what I'm saying? So we get into the law library. Everything seems cool. It's quiet. Uh, everybody doing what they do. Every time somebody come in, I'm jumping, looking. Ain't nobody come in there and do nothing. Unk got up and uh, went over to where the orderly at to get the SOP book. So he gave him his ID card and he got the SOP. And it's like a little shelf right next to the podium. where They don't want you to take the SOP with you. You got to sit right there and read it. So Unk like propped it up on there. He was flipping through the pages reading. It was something that I needed to go ask Unk about whatever it was I was researching about armed robbery. So I went over there and I was talking to him. He didn't look up at me. He was still flipping through the book, but he was talking to me. Now, whenever I'm talking to somebody, especially in prison, I'm never giving them my full undivided attention. I'm constantly, yeah, but what you were saying, though, you know what I'm saying? Or at least with my peripherals, making sure ain't nothing, you know what I'm saying? So while I'm talking to him, probably like 30 seconds into the conversation, <clears throat> through my peripherals, I see this orderly making like a clutching type of movement. And I thought I was tripping at first because this is a little dude that never talk. He looks like a real geek. Keep his pants pulled all the way up over his stomach like Steve Urkel. Keep some big old glasses on. And he lives in the best dorm on the compound. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying not to be paranoid and think, oh, this dude finna try to do something. But I don't want to be naive either and think this dude won't do something because he's in this prison for a reason. He didn't, he ain't get locked up for singing in the church. You know what I'm saying? So while I'm talking to him out my peripheral, I seen like his hand went down like towards his, towards his waist. But that's not the issue. But it's like, I, he like dug a little bit, like he digging into his waistline. So that's when I was like, you know, let me just give him some attention. And when I was looking up, he was pulling his hand up, but I didn't see no ratchet or nothing. But I did see his hand coming up into like a fist. And when he was, when I looked up at the man in his eyes, he did exactly like this. Right then and there, I knew something crazy was about to pop up. He telling me move out the way. So I did move out the way because I don't want to get hit with the ratchet, especially if it's about something that ain't got nothing to do with me. And, uh. As soon as I moved out the way, at the same time, I was like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Now, me even alerting him could have put me in they crossfires. But, you know, I'm out here with this guy every day talking to him. I just, I can't not say nothing. You know what I'm saying? So when I was moving out the way real quick, I was like, oh, so Unk 
he bought paranoid too. He jump up with with the SOP book. He like jump like this at the same time. And that little dude standing behind that that podium, he had a ratchet in his hand, and they were long and they were sharp. And he was doing like this, like to Unk. Unk was throwing the SOP at him at the same time though. He got Unk like right here, and it went, it penetrated pretty good. Instantly, it started coming out. Um, Unk ended up smacking the podium out the way. By that time, dude had done got off about another three good ones. The officer went to screaming on the radio, calling for help. Unk managed to, the hand with the ratchet, grab it like this and grab him by his neck with the other hand. Man, Unk was swinging him around and slammed him out. Unk started stomping him while he was on the ground. So I'm standing over here. I'm looking at Unk. I want to tell Unk, no, nah, Unk will try to stop him or something, but how can I say that? Your whole face, this man just hit you all in the face with it. But as I'm sitting here looking at Unk, bro, and I'm just looking, I know I'm not tripping. It's like his eyeball is getting bigger. And, you know, I'm tripping. I'm like, is his eyeball getting bigger? But what it was, his eyeball wasn't getting bigger. It's that dude had hit him in this area so much. I guess he cracked this, cut this. Man, his eyeball was like, it was damn near coming out of his eye, bro. Oh, it looked so nasty. I turned my head, bro. I couldn't even look at it. Plus, I knew the police was about to come in there. They came and uh, pepper sprayed everybody. So when they came, I put my hand behind my back and got down. They pepper sprayed us anyway. Pepper sprayed everybody in there. Even the officers was in there coughing and stuff. And uh, the same lady that called the cold, man. When I was laying down, the officer would handcuff me. I'm coughing, choking, can't barely breathe. I heard that lady scream. Hurry up and get him the medical. His eye done came out. Oh, man, I just couldn't even imagine that. But um, eventually, when I seen Unc later on down the line, he, you know, he had real deep scarring right here. But he told me his eye did come out. He said, all oh, this had broke off. All oh, this skin ripped out. He said, that eye literally dangled out his eye, out his face. But uh, he told me the dude that he beat up over a month ago Got so much pride that he put a hit on Unk. And uh, they paid that dude to do that to Unk. So, you know, man, that's just a story on. It can happen anywhere, man. Nobody's safe nowhere in there, man. Not even in the library. Not in the chow hall. Nowhere. You're not safe nowhere, man. So, my, you know, everybody, man, please, bro, just make better decisions. But let's stop putting ourselves in these situations, bro, because it's so easy to get in there, but it's so hard to get out, bro. So we're going to be accountable, take responsibility. We're going to make better decisions. We're going to make money, not excuses. And, yeah, man, it's your boy Bill. I'm gone for now. And, uh, yeah. <laughs>